Hello, Rim to the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 273. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in that KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, guys. We're in here rejoicing today in the Ozarks because we got some rain. Yes, we did. <laughs> we much were about needed. getting to drought level, and, and so we're very thankful that he brought us some rain, and there's the dust is settled, and I think we're going in the right direction. We'll have to mow grass next week, but that's the price that's you okay. pay for rain. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, we're uh, doing the podcast a little bit later today, and if those who have been watching for it to be released, you'll you'll be aware of that. We uh, I had several interviews I had to do this morning, and uh, they were great interviews, and uh, and gave us a little bit more time to pray through and to share some things. And Mary was busy in there researching. And uh, what did uh, the Holy Spirit lead you to today, hon? Well, um, I wanted to start with one thing, just a heads up for everybody, because we've got a one of those occult dates coming up at the end of this week. Um, it's September start. They prepare on September 6th and the main day is September 7th. It's called the marriage to the beast. Other place it's called the feast of the beast. Um, there's different, uh, people that say that there's, um, different timing for it. Like some people say that it happens every seven years. There's a, supposed to be an Illuminati, um, event every 28 years on these dates. And then, but I have found, and I, and I think that, there's others that agree with me that every year this is is a gathering in different ways by people in the occult, however you go about it. And so I've found in the past these are really uh, times that we need to be praying about. There's uh, there's dismemberment that's connected to this, this ceremony, even though it's um, – it's a lot of, I think that the main thing that they do is they actually go through a ritual ceremony that marries uh, virgins to Satan. And um, I, I remember well back when we were in my hometown when we had the storefront church that there was a woman that it became very apparent um, that she was involved in the occult. And she, when that, that time came, she brought her little girls in in the little wedding dresses. <laughs> And I mean, it was it was very odd if you didn't know what was going on. But I mean, it, I was just sick. I was so sick because you could tell that they'd been affected by something, and and they were in those dresses. And boy, it was just it was a rough time. So anyway, that's coming up. You know, it's a time for us to just ask God to forgive the sins that have given um, power to the occult, to break that occult power, and to protect the little children, to to roadblock any activities that they're going to roadblock the drugs, roadblock the, um, you know, child trafficking. And, and there's, there's people that are getting, getting uncovered, Mike, there were, was it 13 children we heard of in Georgia that they have, they have rescued, uh, because they caught child traffickers. So let's keep praying. God is moving right now and exposing these things. And we sure want to be praying for these little children and that are in these horrific, horrific, uh, situations that God would would bring it to light that they would be rescued and then, and then pray restored. F- yes, and pray for the restoration because uh, I mean this is a <clears throat> a major trauma um, to a child it, no matter what form it's in whether it's been child prostitution or whether whether it goes all the way over to uh, rituals and and things like that they've experienced so we're praying about that um, yeah you know there was another thing that happened too that I put together one time, and I'll say this, I know there's some young people listening, so I'll, try, I'll make this to where it's not so uh, apparent. But there was a woman that, it was very obvious that she was a program multiple. She'd been involved in the occult. She was the one that told me uh, that she liked to ask Satan for things because she got them quicker than when she asked God. So you talk about a mess, there it is. <laughs> but she had worked in the medical field in an emergency room, and she said that one time, that a woman came in, and the story was that she uh, had her arm out the window, and then later on she brought her arm in, and it was not intact. And so, now I don't know about you, but that's that would be hard for me to believe that that could happen, and the jolt of that the, would not, you wouldn't feel it. <laughs> that, 
So I think that was actually a cover story for they, that she had been in a ritual and then brought brought into the emergency room. And I, I did notice before, you know, I would, I would try to be watching when I was out in public to gather information and see if I could see anything that would, um, you know, uh, give proof or, or um, some kind of credence to what people were telling me or I'd read. And during that same time, I saw several people uh, in the area that I lived that had fresh, uh, fresh bandages where they had lost a limb and more than what should have been for a, a single area. Yeah. And so a it, small area, by it the way. convinced me that yes, there was something horrible <clears throat> that goes on on those dates. So let's keep that in our prayers. Um, another thing that happened, you know, this last week, you, I'm sure you all heard of the death of Chadwick Bozeman. Um, I didn't know anything about him, uh, but when they said that he was in that movie, The Black Panther, I remember seeing advertisements for that movie. And how and, big it did it at the post of right. the mail. Book. And yeah. so um, I, I prayed for his family like I do when I hear somebody passes away, you know, for comfort and God to help. And uh, But it, it tormented me. I mean, there was a torment with that that... I haven't felt in a while. And even in the night, I woke up and I thought, God, what is this? And usually the only time that I ever sensed that kind of grieving, that there, something of that magnitude, is there was witchcraft involved. And I, I, you know, did a little research, and, you know, he's been on a lot of interviews. He was in a couple of movies I never even heard of. Of course, I don't watch that many movies, so I wouldn't have recognized him or his name. or, um, But he, when he was in this Black Panther, I guess that's a superhero um, and I, I've not watched it. I didn't want to watch it. It's a Disney film, and I just I stay away from those things. But I did a little reading on what that was. Um, I also um, read a, an article from Christian Broadcast Network, and they said, were talking about how he was a Christian. Um, I think a lot of people uh, were excited about his role in the Black Panther because it was, I think, it was an encouragement to young black people that you know they they could succeed, they could be in in these roles and things. Um, so I I started uh, thinking about well, I wonder uh, if he was involved with Black Lives Matter. We watched last night's um, video of Derek Gilbert where he does the five and ten. And he was talking about the Black Lives Matter and how the people that are the, the co-founders of this, uh, that this is a spiritual thing. This isn't just a political thing. They, they went back to, and I researched this on several articles. I looked through. Uh, of course, he, he explained it much better than I can. I mean, he's very good at articulating information. Um, but it, it's pretty clear that they have gone back to African religions uh, paganism. And it's it's paganism. <clears throat> it involves divination. It involves uh, invoking spirits and invoking spirits of of the dead, and honor to the dead. Um, so and, and this this is significant because when you when you look at this, uh, even though it's set cast in a, a different setting, uh, you know one of the things the the elite love to do is to tell you know the, the phrase Black Lives Matter. Of you know that's that's. You know, it, it's almost like the Orwellian thing that the the ministry that uh, did most of the propaganda was called the Ministry of Truth, and that 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 is you know all lives matter until we consider every single life precious. The truth is that no life is going to matter, uh, but they they use that as an obfuscation of the reality that number one, it, it is a socialistic communistic organization. So were the Nazis, and I'm seeing the same pattern is that Nazi Germany rejected Christianity and they went back to the old gods uh, within, within their heritage, okay, before Christianity came to Germany. And uh, you're, you're seeing the exact same template, Mary, with Black Lives Matter. Well, and I, I think it's a trap that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about, not just for, uh, to bring in things against conservative issues, but a trap for... Um, the young black people. 
And that's I think that's why that was tormenting me so much is, is I felt like something took that man's life. And I know he was battling colon cancer, so this was like several years that he's yeah, been battling this. Years. But it seems like he did well. I mean, if he was able to do these um, this movie and things like that, nobody even knew he was going through chemo surgery. So he was being st- – I mean, there yeah, was strength there. It, it blew me away was with stage 3 oh, colon cancer. He was able to do these movies. It's, it's almost mind-boggling. Um, so I was I I was trying to get all this information in my mind to see now what what are you trying to show me God because I mean I have a, you know I'm an emotional person and and I I cry a lot when I think there's you know people are hurting and things and and so then I started when I heard that on Derek uh, five and ten last night on his five and ten I started researching the Black Lives Matter these co-founders. And I and I then I cross checked and Chadwick Boseman was a supporter of the Black Lives Matter, and I thought that may have been the the um, last factor that Satan used against him to end his life because Satan hates everybody. Yeah. He only he only uses people, even those that think that he favors them or something like that. He's just using them. Nobody matters to him. <laughs> um, and so I started thinking that may have been something that you know. And I and when I looked at some of the things about that movie, they talked. He talked. I think they talked to the dead in that movie. I mean, there's all kinds of of things that are of you know, the African religious system, which, and Derek said last night, and, that, and I found that in the research that, that in, in the western part of Africa, that, that it's voodoo, it's Santeria. I mean, there's several things. All those several things, things came out of that religion. But, yeah. but when they talk about invoking <clears throat> spirits, when this one of the founders of the Black Lives Matter talked about invoking spirits, and then you read on and it goes on into the energy and, and how they need protection. And, well, it's, it's not from Almighty God. I can tell you that. You know, God says in his word, um, I, look, I looked up a couple of verses just so, you know, we could— quote what God's word says and in Leviticus 19 30 31 uh, it says regard not them that have familiar spirits neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them I'm the Lord your God and then in Leviticus 20 27 it says a man also or woman that hath a familiar sport spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death they shall stone them with stones uh, their blood shall be upon them so any kind of, of divination, anybody that's seeking, you know, spirits like the Ouija board stuff or you're seeking anything that you're seeking outside of Almighty God, it's yeah. it's against his law. Well, one it's of the things his. that, that uh, Derek pointed out well, and it's backed up in his book, Veneration, when you look at the research that he's done, is this evoking the dead and pouring out a libation offering has its origin in the Amorites. Of course, we know that you know God said, I, "I will not completely wipe them out because their their cup of iniquity is not full." Mm-hmm. And the the Amorites were the ones that took uh, Babylon to Babylon 2.0, which is the very foundation of the mystery religions today. So it, it's all interconnected. Well, and there there were drink offerings in the Old Testament, right? Yeah, yeah there, there I were. Mean, for there God. were libations that yeah. that were to Almighty God, but ne- these things are to uh, honor. The spirits of the dead, and yeah. and what yeah. their their religion was, and so uh, the reason I I think this is significant for a couple of reasons. First of all, now we know exactly what we're what we're coming against, yeah. and I think that's why there's the fire. I think these spirits that they're invoking are bringing the fire to the cities. Now we can come in and say every day, Father, forgive the sins. Uh, that, that have been done through divination, through these rituals that are invoking these spirits, Father. And fa- and Lord, we just ask that you'd break that occult yeah. power in Jesus' name. We can start praying against that, and I believe we can see yeah. that abated. Um, and then also, my, my other thought was on this, is I don't think that I, I have that kind of grieving unless witchcraft was involved in this man's death. And someone died before they were supposed to. And so what I wanted to to say, and it's it's just a good addition to what we teach all the time anyway, is when you join in with a movement, a a club, 
you know, like it's it's kind of like what we've always talked about Freemasonry. Those men that join Freemasonry don't have a clue what they're joining. They really don't. The vast majority doesn't know what's it. But at the very root of that, it's the occult. Yeah. So so even though they don't know it, just their membership brings this curse, brings this this um, connection to the kingdom of darkness to work in their lives. If if they ever cross Satan, you know he's he. He just keeps all this this information, and that's why I was worried about this. I thought, okay, maybe this, you know, this Black Panther, and and think that maybe that was another connection because maybe some of those rituals on there, you know, Disney's real good about that. They'll have things put in, and it and and I could see how it would draw the black community because this is this is heritage. But you know, I have Irish heritage. I don't want to go messing with leprechauns. I don't want anything for my heritage that is pagan. So I know that that um, Satan can really lure people with that. But my thought is this: is if someone is in is joining with the Black Lives Matter, and I can totally see how someone could say, "Of course, Black Lives Matter," and I'm going to support that. You know, all of us are horrified at the thought of of someone getting shot and and you know being treated unfairly, and how I've you know I've got on here and. Um, cried and went on before because I can't stand the thought of like young black black men getting pulled over if they've got a nice car because you know of course they've stoned I hate that stuff I hate it yeah. and I believe that that God is going to going to rectify this situation somehow to where that there's going to be the Christian community of all cultures of all colors come together and and pray and get this thing solved um and so I, I totally understand how somebody would go that way. But I, I am thinking that this is a trap. In a, and not only because there's the destruction of property and there's anarchy going on, and we've got to pray against that, but this is a trap for all the people that would say, well, this is a good thing. Yeah. This is a good thing, and I'm going to join with it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand with the Black Lives Matter and join with that because is that not what Satan wants us to do? He wants to yoke us to something where he can say, oh, I've, I've got an edge on you now. You, you just joined something that at the very base of it, it's mine. You see how he yeah. works? And so I'm concerned about that. But it, So I wanted you guys to be praying with me about that, not only that this stop because this isn't going to help anybody, and the violence and everything is just tearing, you know, these businesses to pieces and causing all kinds of trouble, and people are dying. So we've got to pray about that, and now we know the root, so we can come against it effectively. But let's pray for the these young people that are that are just they don't realize there's anything pagan at all. I bet there's people that are Christians all over the place that say, "Well, I'm going to stand with them because this is so unfair how they've been treated." Uh, so it's it's something for us to be aware of and be praying about. You know, one of the things that we see, especially with all the rioting and the looting, uh, it's it's connected to, to every single communist revolution. And in fact, those on the left are, are talking about the need for revolution. Though those are communist terms, even the uh, the clinch fish goes back to its origin as fascism. Okay, and when, one of the things that I know, Dr. Tom Horn and others have researched the French Revolution. And that it, 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 it can get to the place, and this is where I think they're trying to take it, it can get to the place where a, there is a spirit over that, uh, in, in the occult they would call it a Gregory. Uh, I think that what it is, I think it's referred to by the Apostle Paul as rulers of darkness. In my new book, I, I get into that, how that they, uh, they are, they are they're, they're setting on thrones in the second heaven. They rule part of, uh, part of the cosmos. Uh, but they feed on the death and destruction, and it can get to the place, Mary, to where society goes mad. Because that, that's what you know, the, uh, the, the uh, founding fathers here in America looked on at the French Revolution with absolute horror. Uh, in fact, wherever in, in France at that time, they, they would actually have what uh, a version of a Statue of Liberty right next to a guillotine. And so they were, they were killing all these people indiscriminately. Or if they thought you might have power or influence or whatever, uh, declaring that it was a part of liberty, mm-hmm. and th- it's like all of all of France went mad. Rose Pierre began to kill even his allies and and his best friends uh, there at the end. And Mary, what it did, 
uh, is it set the stage, all that horror, all that bloodshed, all of, all of the rioting and, and tearing down of society, it set the stage for France to run into the arms of Napoleon, a dictator. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I think there's something similar going on with this. Of course, you know, we, 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 you see the same thing in China. We saw the same thing in Russia with the form of the Soviet Union. They caused such chaos, but it's a controlled chaos so that it pushes you in a direction that you would never go. I think they're trying to do that in America, and that's, that's where there, there is a now kingdom moment for us that if we begin raising up and, and over, over all the bloodshed and all the destruction, pleading the blood of Jesus, asking God to forgive the sins, and then asking for heaven to move against the ruler of darkness that is empowering this in America, that we can begin to see God put the kibosh on a lot of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's bringing spirits in from, a, you know, from Africa. Yeah. So we, we have a, you know, God has made us ambassadors here. And we're supposed to promote his kingdom. And so since this was, you know, a founded as a nation, one nation under God, almighty God, we don't have to put up, I mean, we're having enough fight with the things that are here. Yeah. We don't have to put up with stuff coming from over there that are being invoked. So there's another point of prayer, you know, for us. We're going to, yeah. we can stand here and watch that, watch God Put out these fires because this is not only physical fires we're seeing; these are spiritual, spiritual fires. fires. Yeah, there there is a spirit behind this mm-hmm. that just keeps on driving this. And I believe that um, you know when I was praying, God was telling me that the, there's another big thing coming up that they're going to bring against the president uh, in the, the coming election. days, and He said that it it it's going to backfire. Uh, and so I'm I'm praying about that, but um, I I still feel that that same sense that God is going to do amazing things. I do too. And, you know, when we, we deal with the uh, omnipresence of God, I, I don't think that our understanding of it is enough. You know, because when I, when I look back, um, you know, it, the more that we understand the universe scientifically, the more we can even understand what the Bible shares about God. Uh, there, there was a time that... Um, Prior to Einstein, no one ever considered that time itself was a dimension, that it was a part of the very fabric of space. There's, and so whenever they would try to understand, you know, the omnipresence of God, well, God's just everywhere. But it, it's so much more than that. God fills all time and space. That meant the moment that God said, let there be light, and, and uh, Josh and I on an interview that we just, uh, Josh Peck and I did here uh, last week, uh, we we touched on the fact that uh, without the speed of light, you have time doesn't exist. The temporal dimension doesn't exist. When when God on the first day said light be, He actually limited the enemy by creating something called time. But at that very first moment, God filled all of time. God God in in a, in a great sense, God is still at that very first moment. He's still at the cross. Jesus is still at the, right now. He's ruling and reigning in the millennial reign. He fills all of it until time itself no longer exists. He fills all of it. Now that gives you and I uh, a great sense that uh, of safety in that the God that we walk with has already walked all of our tomorrows. Mm-hmm. And one of the, one of the neat things about the seven days of creation that the rabbis teach is that uh, the sages of Israel teach is that. Everything that could be created was created in those six days. And since God fills all time and space, he knew every prayer, he knew every need, he knew every situation that you were going to be in. And on those six days, he created the answer to the situation that you're going to face tomorrow. You see, that's how, that's how Praise big, his big name. God is. Yes, he's, and he's in fact, so big. There have been men and women that have died, went to heaven that literally saw warehouses. And I, I think that sometimes our minds try to conceptually understand what we're seeing warehouses. And one of them was, was he was a young boy. So he saw warehouses and he saw new hearts, new limbs, new this, new that, and the other. And when he asked what it was for, the angel Thomas said, these are just waiting for the prayers to be said for them to be released. Why? Because in those six days, God already completed everything that you were ever going to need. He created the answer to your prayer. He created the, the, 
a way of going around the snare of the fowler that the enemy has worked for years, and he's planning on, on engaging it here in a couple of weeks. Before the very first second of time clicked by, God created the answer to that to get you around mm-hmm. that. That's why that's why there there is there is no weapon the enemy can form that is not common to man that God cannot deliver us from. And and with that in mind, I, I want to read here in, in Romans chapter eight, verses twenty nine through thirty. And uh, of course, those that are into Calvinism, this this is kind of like their hallmark. And and I don't claim it to be a Calvinist. I think Calvin was right in a lot of areas, wrong in a lot of areas. So was Arminius, because they're looking from uh, the same mountain from two different angles. Uh, but listen to this. Now, Paul's dealing with God in our lives, this this kingdom now moment uh, that we're in. He said, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the first among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Now, the foreknowledge of God comes before the predestination of God. Predestination is like setting the royal seal, is I approve this, okay? God, in, in filling all of time, God knows every situation. God, God knows everything that we're ever going to face, absolutely everything. No matter what hell in the deepest, darkest, nastiest corner of hell that they conceive to try to do to you, or against you, God already knows about it and has prepared a way of escape. Uh, I want to make that clear. That's that's all within the foreknowledge of God. And the reason that you and I are alive today, instead of, let's say, Little House in the Prairie days or during the the revolutionary days in America or, or whatever, is because God decided that this was the time that you were supposed to be born. And on the inside of you, He placed a kingdom arsenal and the things Mm -hmm. of the kingdom that are needed for this season. He didn't put the things in you that were needed for another season. You and I are not a people outside of time. You and I were placed here strategically by the plan of God. And that's an awesome thing right there. Yeah. Only God can do these things. You know, used to, especially when we found out about all this occult, we were right in the middle of all these horrible things, I thought, Oh, I used to think, what a time to be born in. What if I could have been born back in, you know, the Western days, you know, where they had cowboys? And maybe yeah. I could have done that better. But then, you know, like I was talking to you yesterday, that God, how God was talking to me about the the His people right now. He designed us mm-hmm. for this time, and and, and I I don't think there's ever been another time in history where God's people have been crushed down more. Starting from little kids on, yeah. there has been a concerted effort to demean, to make you feel worthless, to make you think you can't do anything. You don't look right. You don't speak right. You don't do this right. I mean, Mike, it is so yeah, so prevalent. Yeah. And so now think about that. Why would the enemy do that at such a level that it's, it's crushing people? Because he's afraid you're going to know who you are. Yeah. And That's with, why. And within us, you know, um, we have the ability and where we are now if we will yield to God because part of this, and Dr. Michael Heiser in his book on reversing Hermon, so much of Jesus' ministry and what Messiah came to do was to reverse Genesis 6 and the effects they had on the human race. So in our generation, God is going to release an anointing to overcome watcher technologies. Mm-hmm. God is going to release an ability that he is going to have this remnant. He is going to have this A-team, these tier one operators in the kingdom of God that know their God and can do great exploits, that can overcome every single aspect of what the enemy has done from mind control to psychotropic weapons to anything else that is imaginable and to make a difference in this world, now the, the ultimate goal for all of us is to be conformed into the image of Jesus. Now, there's that, that, is, that is, for me to completely unwrap that, I could probably write a book and, and teach 10 series on that because there's so many levels to it of, of, our, of having Christ-likeness. But Mary, what I read in the Gospels, what I, what I see in, in, in the book of Acts where it says, Jesus went about doing good and destroying the works of the enemy. 
That's having Christ, that's being conformed in the image of Christ, that we can be about that's our right. Father's business, and the dead raise, mm-hmm. and the lame are healed, that's and, it. and demons are cast out, and no matter what the enemy plots against you, Almighty God makes a way of escape for you. That That's the reason that we see the life of Jesus is not just because he's Messiah, but he's, he's teaching us how the new man is going to walk with God. Mm-hmm. And all of us, every single one of us, if you're listening to this and you've made Jesus Christ a Lord and Savior of your life, God had foreknew you before the earth was. Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation mm-hmm. of the world, which means the Almighty God knew those for whom the lamb would be slain before the foundations of the world. Okay? That's right. He knew you before you were in the womb. Now, he knew all the garbage that you would have gone through. But he knew you were strong enough to make it through it. (laughs) And he prepared a remedy through the cross and the kingdom and the blood of Jesus and the word of God to make you whole, not only to make you whole, but to make you an operator in the kingdom of God that can move in the 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 uh, there there's there's a really interesting phrase in the uh in the book of acts where they were trying to choose a replacement for Judas and they were, we need to find someone to take our portion of his ministry of the lord's ministry every one of us have a portion of the ministry of Jesus to carry out in the earth whether it's just loving on people doing spiritual warfare, teaching, preaching, all these different things, each one of us have an aspect, a part of the puzzle. When we all move as a body in whole as an army, Mm -hmm. only then under that tapestry can you see the fullness of the ministry of Jesus in the earth. That's it. And, Mary, I don't see it stopping. Jesus didn't say, and and the, the apostles didn't say, and nowhere in the Word does it say, all that has to end when we get near the end times. No, I think it's going to increase. I think it's going to increase. We're, we're going to take it up to a whole nother level. God is not going to allow the devil to bring his first-tier operators and his army in without responding with first-tier tier door kicker, Navy SEAL kind mm-hmm. of operators in the kingdom of God in the last days. And when if you've ever watched, there's a show called SEAL Team. Not only are the guys kicking down the doors are important, but the ones handling the intelligence, the one coordinating air support, that that whole yeah. team is with without them, the door kickers won't work. You, you right. have you have to have all of it. It's gotta together. be the team. That's it. And see, all of us have this place in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And the now word for you is that Almighty God placed you in this now because the kingdom of God needs you. And the heaven is getting ready to move in supernatural power to set you free, to heal you, so that you no longer have to concentrate on getting restored, but rather to be used of the kingdom for the king's purposes. Oh, preach it, darling. I tell you, there's there's things that are going to change. Because let me, let me give you an example of something that I know was done through witchcraft, and it gave me some insight on how a couple of weeks ago I talked to somebody, and they said they have a recurring dream, and in this dream they're in this black room, and that there's a demon that comes and gets right in their face, this big, horrible demon, and they can't speak. They can't use the name of Jesus. They can't do anything. And I thought, I finally know what to pray. Yeah. I finally know what to pray. I finally know that, that because I, I've got a pretty good idea of where it came from, and I'm, I'm asking God to forgive the sins of the people involved in that because what that is is a, is a dimensional trapping. And so if you came from Freemasonry, if you, if you have anything in your, your life to where your, your mind has been compartmentalized, a different set of neural pathways set up, um, the witches work with the mind control, and they know how to trap people. Um, they know the circumstances that are there, and they'll they'll use you know when they had that movie on uh, Disney movie about Ariel, what was that? The Little Mermaid. I I've watched that when my kids were little, and uh, there was a witch on there named Ursula. Well, she trapped she trapped that mermaid's voice, and she couldn't speak. And it's a you know big bunch of witchcraft in that movie, and so I thought, oh, I finally know what they have done, and God help them. Because I know, as, as I pray this, as I continue to pray, 
that that thing is going to leave that room, that that person is going to be set free out of that room. And there's probably a couple of people listening to me that were a part of that. And I can tell you it won't leave without going back. And so, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing. Because at some point, the occult have to see that there's one greater. They Truth. can't just see everything they do just get accomplished. And, and that person that's, that's caught in that room, the, the destiny on their life is great. So when they come out of that room and they get their voice back, woe be it to the kingdom of darkness. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the kingdom of darkness. I don't even hold the witches and those people responsible for all the things that have happened because they're just, they're just pawns in a game. They may think they've got all this power and stuff, but they're just pawns in the in Satan's hands. And it's really, I really feel bad because we're coming to the end of what's called the devil's reign, R-E-I-G-N. Now, when that happens, do you think that those demons are going to leave those people and uh, not retaliate? Of course they will. And, and I think that that may be what, you know, we're going to see a lot of in, in the coming days. I, th- I think this is so significant, what is going on with with our nation right now to affect the world. And I think what you're talking about is so important. That's why I'm so excited about this the new building that we've got. Because we hear a lot of times that, that we'll hear from people that say, do you know anybody in our area that we can get with and fellowship with that, that follows you know what you guys preach? And and there's just so many people places and, and they're by themselves. So my thought is, you know, I think that's one of the key things that God's gonna do with our ministry is we're going to have conferences. People are going to come from all over. They'll get to meet there, and there's a real good chance they're going to meet People like believers own, yeah. that they can they can start you know congregations, assemblies in in all these places and start the same kind of prayers that we we do here over the Ozarks. Oh, and I think I think it's part of what you're saying. You know, this is this is key. That's why the Bi- the Bible talks so much about you know the members of the body you know little toe can't say to the the hand have no need of the it's it's all of these these things that work in conjunction and that's when the kingdom moves. Oh, absolutely. Because you know, and God's not going to put every. I, I don't think this is going to be um, God moving in a way where there's there's people that just boy it's this person or this person. No, it's going to be the body. Oh, absolutely. And the, the whole thing of leadership, you know, the uh, I taught a course for the seminary called the Leader One. You have to be a Leader One before you can be a Captain of Ten, a Captain mm-hmm. of Ten before you can be a Captain of a Hundred or a Captain of a Thousand. And at the same time, Mary, what I'm seeing is God's going to raise up, raise up household leaders. Uh, I think there's, I think, cell groups and homestead groups and all these different things. Uh, there's going to have to be true leadership there. And one of the things that, that the part of my vision for the, the center once it's open is bringing them in to train up the leaders, whether it's just a husband over his household or a small cell group leader uh, to a pastor of a mega church. It doesn't matter to me. All of them need training. Uh, there's so much that we're not being taught that we need to be taught. Uh, we, we need to have the depth of the Word of God because right now the enemy, I mean, he's pulling out big guns. Oh, yeah, he and, is. And, and shallow Christianity will not get you through a hard shelling from the enemy you, you've got to be entrenched in the word of god and you know the other day i was praying and i uh, i saw a guy just being convinced you know the word of god is like soil the bible always talks about that and and the devil convinced him that what he had to work with was just this little tablespoon and you know i've, I've you know we got when our kids were little and our grandkids, we seen them go out with a tablespoon they're playing in the dirt and stuff and they'll make like little roads and stuff with it and they have been taught that's church. In the depth of God's word, that's church. And I saw the Holy Spirit come in with a huge backhoe and said, come, let me tell you, how, let me show you how to really dig deep. And, you know, I, I've, seen, I've seen guys with the, just a backhoe dig a trench so deep that you can't even see the guy's head when he's walking in the trench. And, of course, then there's other stages that we've seen earth movers that can almost move as, as much dirt as a house just in one scoop. There's so much more to the kingdom 
But the devil has convinced us to play in the dirt with this little spoon of what what is being regurgitated over Christian television and Christian radio instead of digging deep in the Word of God. And Mary, most of the time, with a lot of the most precious things, you're not going to find them sitting on on the top of the ground. Many times you've got to dig deep. And that's where the real wealth of the word is. That is when you, you know you're digging deep and all of a sudden you can see the symmetry of the word of God and how that there's this line of truth that God just keeps on expanding and expanding and it explodes in Jesus in the New Testament. And all of a sudden you begin to see how all these things are connected whether it's of walking in the kingdom or whether it's how the devil gets you know gets a stronghold on society guys you know one of the things that we need to realize is that we the body of Christ the true body of Christ is the ultimate counter culture on the earth Mm -hmm. because culture itself is controlled by principalities and powers that that took over humanity at the Tower of Babel when God divorced humanity. They have been controlling humanity and the very culture itself ever since. We're not to be a part of culture and try to identify with culture and allow that culture to change us. We're to change culture. Mm-hmm. It is the salt that changes what is put in. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's light that pushes back the darkness. But until we realize that and that the true counterculture is the kingdom of God, we're not going to make the headway that we need to make. You see, in the kingdom, we can we can look and 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 that's one of the reasons I, I love the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir because you you see almost every ethnicity there in worship before Almighty God what a beautiful in, in, sound. in that choir oh, my and, and just the beauty of it. Yeah. I told Mary, I said, there, there may be a special concert in heaven. Could you imagine all the generations that have ever sang in that choir all getting together mm-hmm. in heaven as one group? I mean, you, you want to talk about a concert. The, the body of Christ is that way that, that we, we can celebrate the, the diversity and the way that God has made us as far as, you know, the, mm-hmm. and with all of us, there are good things that that the Word of God has influenced our culture on, and there are bad things that we need to to reject. Yeah, in every ethnic group. Every but with, 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 with those ethnic groups, though, the good things are strengths that each one of us can learn from. Well, that's and right. that we, we recognize them, we celebrate them, but we realize there is only one human race, and that all of us go back to Adam every single one of us, all of us go back to the cross, that we, we are blood-bought, we are blood-washed, mm, we have right. been redeemed out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every ethnic group to serve our king. And when we realize that and begin celebrating the power of God that no matter what our background was, he can pull us out, we can do what communism cannot do. Preach. We can That's do... It. What no other ideology can do, that's one of the reasons why when they begin taking over, the first thing they go after is the church, because that only in the church, only in the body of Christ can can manifest that which they promise but can never do. Mm -hmm. And that 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 is all a part of, of who we are. And I believe that justice should be absolutely blind. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It, it matters the, the, the situation and the facts, and the facts alone. Of course, we know that it's not that way in America. And it's not that way anywhere in the world because of prejudice and a lot of things, because of men and women that have not renewed their minds or just backroom deals and all these things yeah. going on. Um, we, ought, we ought to be outraged at that and stand up for kingdom principles. I think that's one of the reasons that uh, Martin Luther King was so powerful is that he was a preacher first. He understood walking in the kingdom of God first and used that as a principle. And guys, without setting fire on so much as a campfire, without firing a single weapon, they changed the generation Mm -hmm. because it was kingdom principles and what's being done now is about to undo what he did back in the 60s. And I don't want to see that. I, I, think, I think we need to have true justice in America where justice is blind, where uh, it doesn't matter the family or the money behind you. I don't care if you are a political elite 
or you're just uh, someone struggling to make $19,000 a, a year just trying to feed your family. Justice should be the same. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But that, that idealism is drawn out of the word of God, out of the kingdom, not out of the ways of men. That's right. And guys, as we stand up for truth and and reject paganism, reject because the old gods are returning. That's that's the whole thing. The, 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 this veneration to the, the old gods because uh, even one of the things I found interesting within Greek and, and, and the mythology is we, we know that there were original gods like Hercules, Zeus, and all those were... The you know the the watchers were the um, were the titans, and of course Zeus and all them the Olympians were the the Nephilim. Okay, that could they were they could influence man after they they died in, in God's judgment. Well, what's also within that thread that we see in Nebuchadnezzar, we see in, in the uh, the Caesars, is they believe that if you that if you were a human, and you could do such great exploits that you would transcend and become one of the gods and that you could begin influencing humanity from the grave. That's why there was veneration among the Amorites and all these for the dead, these pouring out libation mm-hmm, offerings right. and all these different things. All that is, is being resurrected. The Nazis were involved with it. Every, every aspect of paganism, it goes back that way, whether it's the Norse gods or whatever. And the only true counter to that is the gospel of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. And that's the reason that witches can be saved. Yes. You know, back in the Old Testament, they, they were required to stone them, and, and they, it was a death sentence because— There was no what, remedy. There, the blood of Jesus hadn't been shed. They were loosing things that were going to destroy generations. Uh, and so now they can be delivered. Those Because of the authority Jesus gave us, those entities can be bound— Yes. And people can be set free. And that's that's what we're walking into. We're walking into the time of the greatest harvest, and we're going to be equipped. We're going to have every weapon that God's given us in our arsenal working right. We're going to be like that Navy SEALs, a team working together, all the different components. We all have different gifts, and God's going to I, – I see that. I see that before Jesus comes back, he's going to see his body working the way it should be. That's that's the the bride. Yeah. I mean, the bride, she's not going to have pagan things on her. She's going to be well equipped. She's going to be, she's going to be ready. You know, I, I, of course, I've been to a lot of conferences and a lot of different things. And one of the things that I that I have seen was when people really understand this dynamic. Let's say you're a part of a ministry that that ministry it has some really powerful preachers and stuff in it, but you know that preaching wouldn't go beyond that room if it wasn't for the technicians that knew how to do the video, mm-hmm. knew how That's to do right. the audio. And in the, in, this, in the scope of things, the guy that is making sure that the sound is balanced, the video is good, and everything is properly done the way that it should be so that it can be released is just as important as the man of God or the woman of God that's giving that teaching. That's right. Because without that, it could not happen. And as far as heaven is concerned, the whole team gets the credit. I mean, there's, oh, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's parables about all these guys that Jesus is, is hiring, bringing into the field. Each one's doing something different, and each one even comes in at a, at a different time. And what blows everybody away <laughs> is the guy that— They all get paid the same. <laughs> they all get paid the same because they're part yeah, of a team. That's right. And, in, and the reward is going to be not, you know, not special for this leader or that leader. It's, it's that team working together. And we appreciate you guys so much. Yes. Your support, your prayers mean so much to us. We can feel your prayers. We thank you for the cards and, and for the encouragement. It means so much to us. And uh, we're, I'm, just, I'm keeping my focus on top of praying for the nation and for every person I know needs prayer. I'm keeping my focus on this new building because I, I sense that, that that's where we're going to make some big differences for the nation by the people coming, receiving, yeah. and going back. And uh, I just I think there's going to be amazing things and an amazing harvest that's going to be brought in. You know, I wish we could. I wish it was done tomorrow. Uh, you know, but the truth is, we we got crews scheduled coming everywhere, everywhere from now. They're so uh, busy. We were really shocked, guys, yeah. when we started looking at the contractors and the different people. And and we've we found someone that we think is just. Uh, going to be perfect, and yeah. they're they're going to be given given a bid one day this month, and then they're also connected to 
the probably the electrician that we'll need the um, drywall drywall and all, all, all of that stuff. Things. And in fact, he's the guy who originally built the building. And so what a what a perfect guy to give. He's a believer. Right. And so you know we're hoping that by the end by the end of summer. Not only will the building be done, but we're hoping maybe next fall we could have our first our first seminar, our first conference. We're hoping that it can be done. And, I mean, there's unforeseen things. But just just think about this. God's able to bring this in his timing. Yeah. And we're trusting him. Um, got got all kinds of, of things in the works to get this done. And I'm making plans. And don't forget to, you know, we're almost to the fall feast here. It's yeah. just coming up here a couple of weeks um, and so I've been excited about that. If you ever just want to just feel it really good in your home, you make some of that apple cider where you take organic uh, apple cider. I've used just apple juice and slice up good oranges and cinnamon, cinnamon. sticks and put some cl- a little bit of cloves and, and things in there. Oh, you're making me oh, happy now. Oh, my word. You walk in and your house is going to smell wonderful. Anybody walking in, they'll want to drink some of that and... There's just all kinds of wonderful things that are coming. Now, we know that there, that we're in perilous times, and we know that there's there's things we're going to see, guys. It's like I was talking about. You know, the, it's like you're watching somebody that's given birth, and those labor pains peak out. They go down. You get a little rest period. You go. And so we're going to see some things, but at the same time, our God yeah. is going to do amazing things. I remember years ago I had a uh, command sergeant major. In fact, uh, at that time he, he was the youngest – guy ever in the army to get a uh, sergeant major okay and so he was somebody to listen to i remember one day he was talking of course he went through vietnam a lot of these things and uh he said one of the things that he learned is you find joy and and stuff in the down times because that prepares you for the next battle mm-hmm. and so yeah we we have uh, we, we have we have some battles ahead of us but we we've got to celebrate during the down times and enjoy those times because we draw strength from those, it's part of helping to recharge and uh, and maybe forget about the battle or maybe learn how to use a new weapon or something during during the downtime and, and just enjoy it to prepare for the next battle. And uh, so and, uh, the reason I share that is we, there, I mean, there are times of rejoicing in God, rejoicing in the Word. There are times that you may need to turn off all the constant uh, stuff off of YouTube to where it's, you know, this conspiracy and this conspiracy and this conspiracy. What I have found out for every one conspiracy, there's 142 positions mm-hmm. that, that are being, you know, and, and some of them are, are kingdom intelligence and some of them are counterintelligence from the enemy to discredit and obfuscate what's really going on. Uh, sometimes you got to lay all that down and just return to the purity of the word and rejoice in God and that he is still yeah. in control so that we can be truly ready for the next battle. And he'll give you insight. You really will, as you just quiet yourself. And you know, most of you are probably fasting like we are. Uh, different fast people are going on, getting ready to, to go into the fall feasts. And I just, I think it's a, it's a special time. And I, you know, I've had some people, you know, post, you know, to share more about Teshuvah. Uh, if you, if you go to our YouTube channel, YouTube slash Biblical Life, and just search Teshuvah, I've actually done complete teachings on Teshuvah that are video teachings from Biblical Life TV that you can just simply look up. They're already there that you can watch that'll that'll bring you up to date on the concepts of it and how it's placed within the fall feast. Teshuvah is not a feast. It's a time of prepar- uh, preparation for the feast. Mm-hmm. And, of course, there's three feasts in, in, the, in the fall feast. Uh, Yom Teruah, the, the sounding of the trumpets or the day of trumpets. Uh, then we have the Day of Atonement, and then we have Tabernacles. And uh, But Teshuvah is to prepare us for all that so that we can enter into it with a right heart so that during those appointed times that God can do what he needs to do in our hearts yeah. and in time our families. Yeah, of, of searching within. I've been yes. doing a lot of that and saying, Father, show me anything yes. you know, that I need to change, that I need to. And I, I just feel like we're going in the right direction. I feel like that he's showing us things that we need to see and preparing us, and we're going forward. That's right. Well, Father, we pray for for everyone that listens to this podcast, Father. I ask that uh, you would help us to supernaturally sense uh, your guiding and your placement as us, even within history. Mm -hmm. Father, that you have brought us into this now moment in the kingdom because there's more in us than we realize. There's more that you want to do through us than we realize. And, Father, there is an armory of the kingdom on the inside of us waiting to be released yes, help us when Father. we fully surrender before our king so that we will only 
do his bidding in the earth. And Father, bring us all to that place. Give us that grace and that supernatural ability to lay it all at the cross so that when we stand up from the cross, we live every moment for the king and according to his command. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The Kingdom Priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual, you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity. Revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the Kingdom of God in the Bible? And who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the principalities wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. The real purpose of the fire of God. How to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The kingdom priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Oh, 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 oh,